All right. It is time for sexual follies. Before, before hold that because we're going to end with that. Um, before I get to the one thing I really want to talk about, uh, I, I just have to have a shout out to my friend Obian Uju Ikiocha, who we call her Uju because who can pronounce it? She got. She is a very powerful opponent of abortion, uh, especially trying to keep abortion out of. Africa, which he says is essentially cultural imperialism. These white, you know, upper class people come in and say, oh, what you really need is abortion. And she says no one in Africa thinks abortion is a good thing. And so they're selling this Western idea of these crummy values. And she got into an argument with Bill Prady, who is the uh, Twitter argument with Bill Prady, the executive producer of the Big Bang Theory. It's really interesting. So Prady first tried to argue that uh, the Abortion is biblically allowable because of the verse in Exodus. And the verse in Exodus, Exodus 21, 22, says, If men struggle with each other and strike a woman with child so that she has a mis miscarriage, yet there is no further injury, he shall surely be fined as the woman's husband may demand of him, and he shall pay as the judges decide. But if there is any further injury, then you shall appoint as a penalty life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand. So in other words, they read this to say that the, the killing the baby is not actually killing, you just get a fine, but if you kill the woman, then that is really killing. Unfortunately, the translation is bad. <laughs> That's not what it really says. What it really says is if men struggle with each other and strike a woman with child so that the child comes forth, in other words, if it causes a, the, the birth to be premature, then you get fined. But if there's any other injury uh, that to the, either the woman or the child, then it's life for life. So that, that is a very, very dubious reading. So anyway, they get in this argument on Twitter, and Prady, the executive producer of the Big Bang Theory, says to her, well, are, what if somebody else's religion permits abortion? Are you going to just stick to, is only your religion valid? And he just said, well, it's still killing. It doesn't, you know, it's not the point of the religion. And he said, well, I can't take you seriously if you're not going to allow other religions. And she said, well, then what about honor killing? Are you going to allow Muslims honor killing? <laughs> and Brady cut her off. He just, he, he, he blocked her on Twitter because that was a bridge too far. He would not denounce honor killing, basically. He wouldn't do it. So anyway, that's the, the level of logic. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that there are people having these arguments, but that's the level of logic you're dealing with from the left. Here is an article from uh, uh, the New York Post. Cheap sex making men give up on marriage. Thanks to cheap sex, marriage may be doomed. The share of Americans ages 25 to 34 who are married dropped 13 percentage points from 2000 to 2014. A new book by sociologist Mark Regnerus blames this declining rate on how easy it is for men to get off. Regnerus calls it cheap sex, an economic term meant to describe sex that has very little cost in terms of time or emotional investment, giving it little value. Regnerus bases his ideas in part on the work of British social theorist Anthony Giddens, who argued that the pill isolated sex from marriage and children, add online pornography and dating sites to the mix, and you don't even need relationships. The result is two overlapping but distinctive markets, one for sex and one for marriage, with a rather, rather large territory in between comprised of significant relationships of varying commitment and duration. In generations past, women generally made men wait until marriage to have sex, to get a wife, and therefore sex. Men had to be clean and presentable and have a good job. This, Regnerus reasons, gave men all the motivation they needed to become respectable members of society. But now with porn on demand and greater reproductive freedom, sex is a commodity available at any time. This has left men with little motivation for marriage. Now, I, I want to talk about this because, first of all, I'm not convinced that it was ever that hard for men to get sex if sex was what they wanted. But what I really think, I don't, I don't think any, I've never heard anybody talk about this but me, is that ever since the Industrial Revolution, the profit to be gained by children has gone down and down and down. Children used to be called the poor man's wealth. Why? Because they worked your land. They did things for you. They helped you out. They helped you build your business. They became part of your business. But with the Industrial Re Revolution, as the profit-making centers moved into cities, children left home, and sometimes they sent money back, sometimes they didn't. Their skills didn't exist in the father's time, so the father couldn't pass skills on to them. They became separated from the family. Children have become less and less of a profit-making business. So just looking at this from a materialist economic perspective, a child today 
only costs you money. There's some chance he'll take care of you when you get older. And conservatives complain. They say, well, the government takes care of you now, so that means children don't take care of you. But that, that was the government reacting to the fact that children now leave home. Children are almost entirely an expense. So think about this for a minute. If you're a materialist and children are entirely an expense, children do not bring any money in. They only take money out. Children have very little value. Who else has value as a person? Who else loses value as a person? If children lose value, women lose value as people because their special gift is they bring life into the world. So if you're a materialist and children just take money away from you, then women's pro productive powers, which used to be their real power in the world, used to be their value and their power, gone away. And that explains a lot of feminism, why feminists are insisting that women's value doesn't have to do with the home, doesn't have to do with raising children. It has to do with doing things that men do as well as men do them, which is unlikely because if you believe in evolution, men were evolved to do certain things. And that's why they do them. That is why they do them. It's not like, it's not like flying a fighter plane existed and that we said, oh, only men will be allowed to do that. It's that flying a fighter plane was invented by men for men to do. You know, that's why, that's how it all happens. Now, listen, this is not saying that women can't find new avenues of value and all this stuff. But just remember this, that if you're a materialist, then children's sole value is economic. Their value has gone down. The value of children has gone down. And that is one of the reasons why birth rates drop in civilized, industrialized societies. And I think this is something we need to deal with because... I believe, of course, children are a great spiritual benefit that everybody should have them. I believe that they make life life. I believe they make show, teach you the meaning of life. I believe that children and the homes that women make for them are the most valuable things that happen in human life, far more value than being, having far more value than being the CEO of a company and all these things. But it's not all about sex. It really is about the entire economics of the human family, which has changed with the invention of machinery. And I think that is the thing that women are dealing with to, to construct new value for themselves in a in highly industrialized and highly uh, mechanized society. And the thing that men are dealing with when they think, oh, here we have this powerful sex drive, but if it leads to having a child, suddenly it's gonna cost me money. You know, that's, those are questions that can only be addressed on the, on the spiritual plane or if you address them on the economic plane, I think a lot of people are not going to like the answers, including left-wingers. All right, that is sexual follies. Show me that thing again. I'm so easy to entertain. I'm just so easy. All right.